If you've watched any of the videos that I've done recently, you can probably guess that I'm a big fan of natural media simulation software. I like digital painting packages that can produce things that look like traditional artwork with lots of texture on them. So I was particularly interested to see that uh, Corel had uh, announced the latest version of their software Corel Painter uh, and we're releasing Painter 2023. So in this video I thought I would take a little look at uh, the new version, what it offers and how does it compare to my current favourite digital software which is Rebel 5. So let's take a look. My name's Pete, welcome to Basement Picasso. So Corel Painter has been uh, an important piece of software that I've used for almost over a decade now. It was actually the first piece of software that really got me interested in digital painting and uh, it was the first thing that I started to work with uh, in terms of using a, a laptop uh, and an old Wacom Intuos uh, drawing tablet and I would take those into the life drawing studio and start to, to draw and sketch. And I, I was just amazed at what the software could do in terms of some of the tools that it had with uh, pastel tools and uh, some of the, the sort of painting uh, that it could do was, was just so impressive at the time and it, it just developed my enthusiasm for digital tools. So when Painter 23 came along uh, I thought I'd have a look at uh, what they're offering and in terms of the software package uh, it's an expensive piece of software. Uh, it's £360 for the full software and if you get an upgrade then that's going to cost you £180 and part of what we'll be looking at today is is that really worth it and uh, there's um, a good set of page here that tells you the overview of all the things that they've been adding in uh, in terms of the uh, different uh, brushes, the different um, selections that you can do and various um, features that they've added to this particular version. So this was a bit that caught my eye in terms of the, the brushes uh, and this is one of the big ones that they're trying to push for justifying this um, upgrade cost, uh, this new sort of fluid brush category. So we're going to be taking a look at that uh, but you can also see demos of all the other types of categories of brushes so we've got their thick paint, uh, we can see a little bit about their watercolour, we can see their pastels, particle brushes that they've got, special effects brushes like the sergeant brush and things like liquify, uh, special effects brushes uh, and then various uh, air brushes. So these are the, the sorts of categories of brushes that they provide. Um, but when I looked at this, one of the things that immediately uh, sort of occurred to me was it's interesting that all of these demonstrations are on a plain 2D background. None of them are interacting with or simulating textures. And that's something we're going to look at a little bit closer once we start to have a look at the software. So lots of information in terms of what they're trying to support. And I think Corel Painter for 2D type work um, concept work, illustration work has always been very strong. It is a really good bit of software. It's got a lot of features. I used it for a long time um, and was, was really impressed with what it could do. But my interest was more in fine art and really traditional, thick, textured, uh, realistic type, type of artwork. Um, and that's the one that I think it, it really struggles with and we'll, we'll look at that in a bit more detail. So it's a nice little section here which shows the, the way that you can compare the sort of before and after and this was the one that really kind of leapt out for me in terms of uh, this looking 
uh, really interesting in terms of the, the way that a photo had been painted over but using all the different tools and techniques and it looks like it's got uh, a bit more of an interesting uh, integration of these uh, textures, the thick paint, the shadows, the canvassy textures, all looks um, really quite convincing um, and that's absolutely uh, what, uh, what I'm interested in. So let's have a little look at the software and see how it stacks up to some of the things that it's trying to do with this. So today I'm just running the demonstration version of Coral Painter that you can download. You get uh, a trial for I think it's 14 or 15 days, lets you have a good play around with the software, see what it can do and uh, see how it works uh, for you. Um, so once you load up, you'll get uh, a basic page that allows you to uh, open and uh, go back to any previous documents or create uh, a new document. And uh, I'll just create a, a basic, uh, fairly small canvas with some paper just so that we've got something to start working on. So the first thing you'll probably notice is you fire it up even though you've selected uh, a paper and you're supposed to have uh, some textures and some of the brushes uh, in fairness will start to respond to that texture there isn't any texture there there's 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 just uh, a layer and a blank canvas so if you go to um, some textured uh, brushes that should be responding then they will start to paint in to that texture but there's no actual texture there so it, it, it's a little bit strange um, so you've always had to kind of come in and do apply surface texture and there's lots of settings you can apply um, and uh, hit OK um, and now your brush will, your, uh, in this case a chalk brush, will seem to, to interact with it. Um, there's always been various issues about whether it sometimes it feels like it's painting into the texture rather than sort of painting on top of the texture but so uh, you can you can change some of that with the, the kind of the invert tools and um, some of these things that uh, help it sort of interact a bit more realistically um, but there's there's some reasonable uh, interaction there between the tool and the texture but when you fill it in and uh, press really hard then ultimately the texture just disappears. So you, your, your pastel just uh, really sort of um, erases over it. And that, that kind of loses a little bit of the kind of natural uh, feel that you get to it. So the ones that I was particularly interested in, the, the new brushes uh, that they've got are in this fluid category. Um, so we've got uh, fluid uh, pastel brushes. And this is one of the things that uh, you know, you immediately find with um, Corel Paint, and it's one of the reasons why I, I ultimately stopped working with the, the tool, is it's very specific about the layers that tools have to work on. So as soon as you change a brush category, if it decides that that brush category is not compatible with what you're trying to do, then you've got to go to a different layer. Now they've got a better interface, so at least it now takes you to that layer. But in terms of the, the overall experience, it, it's just ultimately, for me, really, really quite disjointed that you're, you're constantly kind of jumping between these different layers. Uh, and when you go from one category to another, whether it's the, the fluid ones, um, if we go to uh, something like an impasto brush, which is a, a textured brush, um, we should be able to uh, start painting and um, that will work absolutely fine because it's now on a, a default layer so we can kind of build up on that um, but if we then go to something like uh, thick paint and try and get some uh, thicker paint using something like the, the nice thick palette knives again no nope, we're on the wrong layer now we've got to go and create another layer again and uh, now suddenly we're, we're off working on a different layer using the, the um, 
thick paint uh, instead of the impasto, instead of the, the, the grain and the textures and, and all this sort of, sort of stuff. Um, and you can see that these are building on top of each other in really quite strange ways. The, the thick paint has the impasto coming through it underneath and it's not really interacting with it and it's not interacting with the canvas texture. Um, and it's just a constant battle to try and get these layers to work with each other and if you merge the layers together then uh, if you take a couple of these layers and select that and uh, collapse it then it converts these layers into default layers so you lose the fact you, you can't merge layers even if you've got two thick paint layers um, I don't think you can merge those and you know all these different layer types you can't merge them into something and then carry on working with the same tools so it's a constant battle to to try and get these tools to to interact and it, it's just a really disruptive experience um, and it was ultimately what made me abandon coral painter back in 2020 so so coral 2020 was the last version that i bought and it was round about the time I was looking at and working with other tools. So um, I started to have a, a look at uh, things like ArtRage. And with ArtRage, you get um, some very nice kind of oily, painty um, brushes. Uh, the colour mixes works really well. So it does proper yellow, blue, makes green kind of colour mixing. Um, and it, it it was a very sort of promising tool, and it's one that I, you know I keep um, you know looking at and occasionally go back to. Um, but even it struggles with when you bring through the the texture. The texture is just an overlay, uh, so it, you know all, all that nice sort of thick paint has just faded into the canvas, and you're not really painting on top of that texture. It's um, the texture is just. Uh, uh, an overlay that, that sits on top of it which kills the, the whole effect of thick paint building up and filling in the grain and all these sorts of things. Um, so it's a good package but again it's just uh, not quite uh, sort of filling in the, the thick paint. Um, and then there's other packages like uh, Realistic which um, for me has, certainly for some of the, the dry media, um, some of the um, best simulation of uh, various sort of tools and software. Um, uh, so things like your, your dry media, like your, your pencils, your, your charcoal sticks, um, you know, those sorts of things. And it's really quick, it's easy, it's got kind of papery canvases or proper canvases and it interacts quite well with it. Um, but again, when it comes to some of the thicker paint, uh, it's just a bit more limited and, and doesn't just have a you know particularly um, convincing sort of feel to it. So when you come over to something like uh, Rebel, and, and this is absolutely my go-to paint package at the moment, um, what we get are tools that um, just very quickly give you just such a, a natural feel in terms of uh, the colours, the, the blending, um, the fact that the, the pigments uh, blend to give, together to, to give you the, uh, the sorts of colours that you would expect. So you get the um, blues and yellows making really kind of sharp, vivid uh, greens. Um, and just the, the texture, the way that it builds up, the, the canvas that sits underneath. Um, and then the, the, the texture and the, the thickness that it builds up. But then when you switch to your uh, wet media and uh, put something on that gives you, uh, a, you know, a really nice uh, sort of wash, that interacts not just with the canvas, but all, all the thickness and all the uh, the material that you've put down and, and it just the, the way that it runs and, and interacts is um, so natural and so realistic that, uh, you know, it, it just feels like working with, the, you know, that sort of material. 
it's not absolutely perfect. There are still a few things around the way some of the thickness interacts and the the kind of shadows and the, the sizes that say, uh, you know, some of those things that I would um, hope could um, possibly change uh, a little bit in the in the future. Um, but just the the way that these things sort of interact, the way that marks kind of flow over each other and pick up the underlying texture um, and you know you can switch between any of these tools so you can go from oil paint to watercolor to, to pencils to to pastels and uh, you know they just work on top of each other um, without any effort or any fuss um, and they pick up the you know the underlying uh, texture and give you very different kind of quality of marks on the, the thick paint to picking up the, the underlying canvas texture and and that sort of thing. So um, overall it just feels so much more uh, natural and realistic and uh, much much closer to the, the sort of traditional thick uh, paint that you can potentially get. So you can see here, go back to Coral Painter and back to some of the, the thick paint, um, trying to build up sort of thick marks and um, where it's sort of paint on paint, then it tends to blend quite nicely and, and you do uh, get some, um, you know, fairly nice um, sort of reasonably thick uh, marks that you know you can build up in a quite thick texture but you can see as soon as you get to the the edges where it's interacting uh, with these different uh, underlying textures um, it, it just builds up all these really kind of weird sort of shapes and it's sort of trying to do the texture but it's just not interacting with it um, really particularly well and just looks uh, a bit strange whereas if you look at uh, something like Rebel, particularly in the Pro version, where you've got the nanopixel nano technology. This is the same type of resolution of image. Um, if you switch nanopixel off, you'll see the pixels in it. Um, but we put nanopixel on and zoom out, and you can see it just does an incredible job of simulating the canvas texture and thickness and the way that these colours have blended. So that for me, um, it, it's an, uh, at the moment in terms of if you want to do traditional looking um, artwork using thick media, using wet media, watercolours, uh, and just uh, you know have those things work together, uh, work um, in a way that brings out the canvas texture and the thickness, etc. For me, uh, at the moment, uh, Rebel is still the, the clear winner. Um, and for me, um, I have to say, um, I, you know, I, I'm genuinely disappointed. I, I really did use Coral Painter for a long time. It, it really is a good package. It has a lot of features and a lot of functionality. And I'm sure a lot of people, particularly for the, the sort of 2D side of things, can, can get a lot out of it. But it's expensive and they're charging significant amounts of money for upgrades. Uh, and for me, it's just not adding that kind of value to make it uh, anywhere near worth um, upgrading from uh, what you could get uh, back in 2020. So um, at this moment in time, my recommendation, if you're uh, interested in this kind of uh, realistic simulation, um, for me, it's Rebel 5. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, I hope it was interesting. Um, just to clarify, this is not a paid promotion, not paid by Corel or Escape Motions. Um, all the views are my own. I, and this is just uh, what I think of the, the two bits of software at the moment. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you've got any thoughts or comments, please feel free to uh, leave them below. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, what's your favourite software? Um, what sorts of things are you interested in? 
uh, I will be doing some more uh, things on other uh, uh, software, um, particularly things like the iPad. There's a couple of really good uh, apps out there that I tend to use. I'll do a video on uh, at some point. Um, but if you've got any things uh, that you'd uh, like to hear more about, uh, let me know. Otherwise, um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, please uh, like, comment and subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon in another video. Thanks then.